Welcome back. The woman tried twice and eventually convicted of being involved in a complicated murder for hire plot could be a witness for the state of Florida in another trial. Catherine McBanwa was found guilty of being the go-between in the planning of the murder of Dan Markell. Markell was an FSU professor in Tallahassee. Before his death, Markell was involved in a custody dispute with his ex-wife, Wendy Adelson. Her brother, Charlie Adelson, is also accused of being involved in the murder. He's set to go to trial in the new year. McBanwa was transported from prison on Wednesday to give a statement to the prosecution. But what exactly she said or what it could mean for McBanwa's life sentence in prison is unknown. Terry, this case has impacted a lot of people. You spoke with Ruth Markell, Dan Markell's mother. What was she able to share with you? Well, Brian, I have to say that Ruth Markell is one of the strongest survivors I've ever seen. She lost her son in that violent ambush back in 2014, and the trials of those involved are still ongoing. The tragedy in all this is that Ruth was not able to see her grandchildren for years. Wendy took them to South Florida shortly after Dan's murder. Ruth has been fighting for the right to see her grandchildren since that time. And those efforts were finally rewarded when she was instrumental in passing what's called the Markell Act. Governor DeSantis signed that bill this past June. It will protect grandparents and grandchildren against alienation from each other in these types of really tragic situations. Fortunately, the two men at the scene of the crime are both behind bars. But as part of Rivera's plea deal, he was only able to serve seven years for his participation, and a lot of people had a problem with that. Garcia, however, will serve the rest of his natural life in prison. But Catherine McBanwa seems to be the linchpin in this crime. She allegedly connected the two killers to the Adelsons. The prosecution's theory is that Wendy Adelson, her brother Charlie, and her parents all wanted Dan killed over a simple custody battle for the two boys. I asked Ruth about her thoughts on what McBanwa might have to say in this upcoming hearing. Listen to what Ruth told me. Now, what we do know is that um, if she has new evidence, it'll have to be backed up. So I'm, you know, very uh, interested, excited about this opportunity. But she already um, testified on the stand twice, right? And this, whatever she's going to talk about now, is going to be contradictory to what she said before. And it depends on how the prosecutor takes that information in terms of the quality of the new information measured against her past te testimonies. And then it would have to be corroborated. This is really important because she can come and say, yes, I saw this, I did this. But they can't accept this now after she previously, I don't want to use the word lied, but let's just say she suddenly wants to change her testimony and, and so forth. So I think the new evidence is, has to be very, very strong. And it, it probably could be something related to the bump. It can something be related to her employment because she has information around those periods of time which are very valuable. You know, for Ruth's sake and for the sake of the entire Markell family, let's hope that McBanwa can shine light on this crime and ensure that all the parties involved will be held accountable. Dina, what's a proper and why would McBanwa testify? She's already been sentenced to life. Essentially what a proffer is, is a witness is giving testimony and then whether or not it's at trial or here before trial to determine what will happen. In this case, the prosecutors are probably trying to figure out how good is the evidence that she could later testify in trial about. Is it worth giving her some sort of deal? As you mentioned, she's already been sentenced, but it's possible for the prosecution to request a reduction in her sentence, and perhaps they might if the testimony is that good. All right, we'll see how that pans out for her testimony and, of course, the proffer. Thank you both. It was one year ago that 18-year-old Kyle Rainhouse was found not guilty for killing two men and seriously injuring a third in Kenosha, Wisconsin. But now, in an exclusive interview for an upcoming two-hour documentary produced by Law & Crime Productions, the prosecution in the case, Thomas Binger, says he believes Rittenhouse is guilty. I think that he's guilty. I think that this is behavior that we cannot tolerate. 
I don't believe uh, that this is justified self-defense. It is the principle uh, that we stood for in this case. A 17-year-old running around our streets with an AR-15 killing unarmed people is absolutely unacceptable. And I'm not backing down from that position at all. In the same documentary, Kyle Ren House says the jury verdict proves he did nothing wrong. A jury proved I didn't murder anybody. I acted in lawful self-defense. The trial proved I wasn't a white supremacist. I don't believe in what white supremacists believe in. I think it's disgusting and I think it's hateful. Since the verdict, Rittenhouse has emerged as a hero to the right and become an advocate for Second Amendment rights groups.